Welcome, everybody, to the Pop Culture Field Manual podcast, always sitting right, comfortably right at the intersection of weapons, action, military, and pop culture. Uh, I'm, yes, I'm Israel. This is Cameron. We are excited to be back with you. Uh, folks, we got a bunch of great stuff on YouTube. want to get this out at the very beginning. First formation, uh, a roundup of some fun pop culture stuff coming up each week on our YouTube channel. That'll be on Mondays, and then every Friday is the debrief with Cameron, wrapping up the week with some great military news. Uh, also join us on our Patreon folks. If you like extra content, go and check that out. Uh, it's a good time folks. Also, I have my horror gaming channel, the is files. I gotta get my energy up, Cameron. I gotta get my energy. Up. What do you need? You need some caffeine. You want me to yell Ooh, at you? I already had some freaking coffee, man. I don't want to be like addicted. I feel, like even though me? I feel like I kind of already am. Yeah. You're like, we I'm not, I'm are. like, I like a cup of coffee in the morning. You are like, I need it. <laughs> oh yeah. I wake up first thing I do. No water, just straight quad. Quad shot espresso <laughs> yeah. to the face. Oh my God. I'm actually thinking about grabbing an energy drink right now because I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gosh, feeling Cameron. it. Dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I just, it's just probably shouldn't do that. No, get it afterwards. I love. I if there's still something, I'm, I'm on this kind of like no added sugar kick for the the time being. It's really good, but every once in a while, man, it's these the strawberry flavor sugar free monsters. Oh, there's a strawberry. I don't know though. what it is, man. Yeah, they got sh well. Yeah, but they got artificial sweeteners, man. I you hear stuff about like it still causes an insulin response and it's still not good for you. It's got a bunch of preservatives in it anyway. Oh, sure, but, sure. A lot of man, once in a while, I sh yeah, I, I sure could. I sure would like a a strawberry sugar free monster. Oh my god, look at you! I like the peach ones. Those are my favorite. Peach, peach, the peach flavor, the peach artificial flavor has grown on me since i was a kid i used to not like peach flavored things now it's like oh they're pretty good yeah yeah me too peach rings growing up were always one of my favorite um but uh mm. they go bad real fast but you know mm -hmm. good segue transition you know it doesn't go bad ever a satisfying death especially with uh -huh. a villain or a character in a movie tv show or video game that just as the joke as a you know one of my favorite lines in one of the movies comes for us uh comes to us from the joker when he looks at Robert De Niro and says, you get what you fucking deserve. <laughs> it's true. man. So <laughs> what makes, let's talk about the folks. This is a part two to an episode. If you want to go back to season two, episode 20, uh, it's the kill shot episode. These are satisfying deaths. And today we're going to be talking about some of the very most satisfying, you know, villain deaths, I guess you could say in this one, yep. Cameron, what makes the death of a villain so satisfying? Oh man. Well, to me, death is a satisfying thing, but that's a very <laughs> weird, that's just for me personally. But I think, you know, what builds up to an extremely satisfying death is, um, just first of all, the person that is a person that is committing acts of atrocity that seemingly get no repercussions of the sort. Right. right. So like, right. you know, as a kid, when you're like, you're with your buddy, and you're both doing the wrong thing and you get in trouble, but your buddy gets away. And then in the back of your mind, you're like that motherfucker, you know, and yeah, you like secretly yeah. want to see something bad happen to them because like they're getting away with it and they're, it seems untouchable. And I think we all can relate to that. But you know, when you see a villain on TV that or a villain in pop culture, that's continuously just getting away with the most diabolical shit mm -hmm. and not getting their comeuffins. Dude, yeah. when it finally comes, it's yeah. a sweet flavor. Yeah, and it's I think it. Addictive. Yeah, I think it what appeals think? to our our sense of justice. Is that is what yeah. I hear when you're talking about that kind of stuff? Because we all have this sense, and we don't see it in every everyday life. But we all know that like justice should be done, the guilty should be punished, the bad guys need to get their comeuppance. You know, we want good people to be rewarded, and we want bad people to be punished, and that doesn't always happen that way. But in movies. When it's good, man, it's really good. And usually it's it so is. good, like you say, after a string of like victories by the bad guy, you know, like just honorable mention real quick, the Patriot, Mel Gibson, right? Uh, Isaac Clark's character, Isaac Clark, no, uh, Jason Isaac, sorry, uh, the actor. He, you know, you think that his son, Heath Ledger, is going to get him halfway through the movie and then he turns it around. Jason guy gets stabbed, Heath Ledger. So this dude has taken everything from Mel Gibson. So by the yeah. end... When Mel Gibson seems to have been hurt, 
and he sees his troops, you know, the flag, the American flag flying over him. And he, Jason Isaacs comes up behind him and you think he's done for, but man, Mel Gibson turns it around and you're just like, yes, yes. You're just so, so satisfying. Yeah, man. Real quick. I a hundred percent agree with you. First of all, I just want to respond, but you say, you say come up it's, Oh, is that come, how it come up? It's, it's a bit of an old time. Yeah. It's a, uh, I it's say come muffins. Come muffins. Come muffins. Like, come muffins. Get your come muffins. Come like come muffins. Is come that how it is? What's up come up it? Come, come buckets. <laughs> no, cut. You know what? Come up is a single word. All right. It's a noun informal, the punishment or fate that someone deserves. Come up ants c-o-m-e come up ants e-a-n-a-n-c-e one word come up it's i've been using that word incorrectly my entire life i always thought it was comeuffins comeuffins you somebody gonna get get their comeuffins and i think if you listen to this recording when i say get their comeuffins i say the same thing and then you're like come up ants (laughs) <laughs> like, what okay anyways that's i'm a good glad that we i'm glad that we took this little sidebar down to yeah, man absolutely well i think that's part me... of your charm though cameron sometimes you mispronounce words or you use them not in their correct context but yeah. i think that's part of why we like you thanks man there's this one guy on instagram that i absolutely disp- despise uh and he is like one of those food content creators where he's just like you know you're gonna put your air fryer at 400 degrees you're gonna add this 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 but I don't know if it's like his gag or his, uh, or he's doing it on purpose, but he specifically, I don't, he just mispronounces like types of foods, oh. not just like a little bit, but like a lot of it. <laughs> and it's to the point where you're like, there's no way, like, it's very annoying. Uh, like what, what he said, uh the word prosciutto like prosciutto the italian uh, thin sliced salted uh deli meat right it's obviously pronounced prosciutto but he i I forgot the video where he's like you're gonna add cheese and then a little prosciatiatio and then (laughs) and you're just like dude you're out here claiming to be like this chef but you're straight up mispronouncing like these basic ingredients he said <laughs> you know the tzatziki sauce the greek uh you know tzatziki, the greek yeah, whatever, tzatziki, cucumber yeah. white tzatziki yeah, yeah he pronounced it as tzatziki and i was like what i thought you were talking about like some slight mispronunciation but that's oh no no, so- no no it's like it is no it is bad and literally it's like uh you know that skit with key and peel when it's like the substitute teacher from the hood and the guy's yeah, name is Aaron, yeah. but he's like hey hey ron yeah. yeah timothy it's like that <laughs> level of mispronunciation but again this has nothing to do with the podcast so we're gonna go back <laughs> into it but i just had to get that off my chest i forgot his instagram handle so everybody can go and block him and try to get his account taken off uh but uh but it's okay. <laughs> get him canceled for mispronunciation yeah get him canceled 100 percent. but we have a we have a pretty solid list for you guys can like izzy said continuing part two of the kill shot and i think uh if you want to start it off izzy with one of your picks here uh let's let's hit the ground running buddy uh, we were talking about this one just before we started, actually, uh, as we were getting the list together and finalizing it. But uh, Denzel Washington's character, Alonzo, from Training Day, uh, the Training Day movie with uh, Denzel Washington and then, uh, what is it, Ethan Hawke? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know, really, really good. I think he actually, he won, I think he won Best Actor Den- uh, Academy Award for his performance in this one. So he's won Best Supporting for glory and then best actor for this one. And mm. you get to you at first you think that maybe he's kind of a maverick, you know, he plays a little bit outside the role by the by the end of the movie you realize that he is completely corrupt and there's no redeeming qualities. He's not even like like there's even like a shootout like finally Ethan Hawk, he tries to get Ethan Hawk killed. He sets him up. He, he spent the whole day setting him up to take the fall. And then he's going to get him killed by these Mexican gangsters. He, Ethan Hawke escapes. He confronts him at his home, Denzel's home. And Denzel's got a little kid. And, like, the little kid is in the midst of this gunfight they're happening. And yeah. Ethan Hawke cares more about the kid than Denzel kid does. Than he he does. Tries to, yeah. He's like, don't hurt my boy. Don't you hurt my boy. That's my boy there. And then he uses his vulnerability and his care for the little kid to try to get a shot off on him. So Denzel's yeah, is completely, no. a complete dirtbag. Dirt dirty uh, cop, you know. Just... Dirty cop, yep. <laughs> 
swindler. And all his, you know? all his boys are dirty too, right? They're all like yeah, part of this LAPD, yeah. you know, unit, and they're all like yep. in comeuppance with each yeah. other. We'll and uh, yeah, they're all in on it. And you know, you have this moral cop that comes in. And he's, you know, obviously trying to elevate his career. And he's like, yep. dude, this is, we can't be doing this. Like, we're here to uphold the law, not break it and take advantage of yeah. it just because of our position. And they're all like, nah, man, we're just trying to get rich. So, yeah, the the scenes leading up to his death, because at first you think he's going to get away with it because he leaves him with the bloods, right? That's that's yeah. one of my favorite parts. Like, all the gangsters sitting outside and he's running and all the bloods, like, stop him and end up taking Ethan Hunt's side. And you're yeah. like, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. even, you know, talking about another movie that has to do with gangs is like the uh, the one with Shia LaBeouf, the not the enforcer, but the, uh, the delivery man or something like that or the uh, <laughs> delivery man, the uh, ice cream man. There's something. Uh, yeah. You talk about uh, where he plays it? a gangster, right? Yeah, he plays a gangster. His name is uh, Creeper. What is it? Yeah, I literally yeah. just watched it the other day. Like David Ayer. Yeah, it's David Ayer. It's a uh, it's a. Uh, yeah, it's something about like the like the apprentice or the delivery man or something like that. Tax uh, collector. I'm sorry. Tax yeah. collector. Tax collector. Something so about like collecting. in the tax collector. There's like, you know, it, these moves like gangs are terrible, right? They do a lot of bad stuff. But in this yeah. movie, you watch Tax Collector and it makes you want to join a gang because you're like, these dudes have like a rule book, right? They have a level of respect for each other, regard oh, like the other code. gangs. Yeah, there's like a code. You know, there's like a code and the the gangsters in training day like have that code too and they live yeah. by the code and they like it's like real recognize real like even though we're on the other side like if you're handling your business so are we like we're gonna ride yeah. with you boy and i was like dude yep. where do i sign up you guys need a yeah. shooter like come on <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's true man yeah it, 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 it's what's great about this death is that the denzel dies twice because like you said in the neighborhood after he's confronted by ethan hawk Ethan Hawke gets let go. They're like, nah, we're good, man. You get out of here. You know, we'll see you around. And then Denzel talks a big game and he's like, I own this neighborhood and stuff. And he's got this great speech. Yeah. He's like, King Kong doesn't have nothing on me. And everyone's yeah. just like, you're full of it, man. They just walk <laughs> yeah, you're away. You're so full of it. Yeah. They turn their backs on him, you know? And then you, you kind of forget because you realize, oh, it's, it's revealed that Denzel, he's on the hook for beating up this uh, Russian gangster. And he's had yeah. a week to get the to get the payment going. Well, that all goes by the wayside. So he's trying to get out of town. He's got the money with him, and uh, the scene, you know, he's there and he's stopped, and he's like, this lady, kind of an SUV, comes up next yeah, to him. He's thinking, out. oh, this is it. She just kind of does makeup. Yeah, yeah she, she does makeup, cigarette. and then she drives off. Yeah, little you know, that's the signal because they stop him in the middle of the intersection. And they just blast him. Yeah, and then like, yeah, they they, they, they shoot his car. They yeah. They yeah, they shoot his car and he kind of ducks and then he kind of crawls out and he's like shot up, but he's still alive. And then they just blast him. They just like, he's yeah. like 40 bullets, you know, he's like, oh, oh you know, yeah. just in a bloody mess. Yeah. So moral <laughs> of the story, don't be a piece of shit. Second moral of the story, don't make deals with the Russian, with the Russian mob that you can't, that you can't uh, uphold. Yeah, that's you right. Will end yeah. Up, you will end up dead. D-E-D, -E dead. Mess. Yeah, in the middle of an intersection by the LAX airport. <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah, no, training day, Alonzo's death was uh, was extremely satisfying just because, yeah. you know, he's such a bad guy. And you're like, man, I really hope that this guy gets what's coming. And not just yeah. on the cut, not just being a dirty cop, but, you know, this shootout with his kid using his vulnerabilities, like you said. It's, it's just not a nice guy. Yep, and he hundred yep. percent gets what's coming to him. But uh, yep. another guy that I think that who has a pretty satisfying death, um, and it like this entire movie is a setup to uh, you know getting revenge on this character, and it's Punisher from two thousand four, uh, not huh. the first one, but uh, you know you have uh, Travolta who plays Howard Saint, and then yep. you have the Punisher. Uh, who's the actor that plays this Punisher? What's his name? Uh, Thomas Jane. Yeah, Thomas Jane, who plays Frank Castle. Obviously, in the beginning of the movie, those of you who have seen it, you know that uh, uh, Frank Castle is responsible for putting whose son or killing Howard Saint's son, right? Or putting him in jail? This one I don't quite remember as well too much, but you know Howard Saint then ultimately becomes. Uh, 
responsible for killing Frank Castle's family. Because I think in this one, he's yeah. Frank Castle's like an undercover cop. Something yeah, goes wrong that's it. He gets outed. He gets found out. And then yeah. his family gets killed. That's kind of the classic exactly. Punisher. Yeah, so uh, now lore. I remember. Yeah, so I remember now. So basically, Howard Saint's son was involved in the sting that Frank, Can uh, Frank Castle was undercover for. And then during that uh, sting, Frank Castle ended up uh, getting the son killed um, mm -hmm. during the bad deal. Um, so then Howard Saint obviously hired some cops to figure out who was part of the sting. And that's how they got Frank Castle's name. And then Howard Saint sent, you know, all his boys to uh, a vacation home in, uh, you know, what is it, Florida or the Caribbean or something? And oh uh, God, kills yeah. kills Frank Castle's entire family. And I think in the comics, it's like his the son and the and his wife get killed. Um, but in this version, like his entire family, his father, his mother, yeah, his they're cousin, like a his dinner aunts, or his something. Uncles. They are. Yeah. yeah, it's like a family reunion that the father puts on that, you know, he's been so dedicated to his police work and, you know, he's a former special forces guy or some sort of special operations soldier. And then he's been working undercover for all this time and he's finally done and out and he's retired and he finally gets to spend time with his family and like build that. And right as that happens, they're stripped away from him. Frank Castle is, you know, what they believe to be dead, but just the spirit of revenge, you know, causes him to stay alive and just become an alcoholic and lift a lot of weights and just <laughs> be hungry for revenge. So, yep. you know, the entire, the entire movie is just a setup for Howard Saint's death. And not only is it uh, enough to just kill him, but like he causes Howard Saint to kill his own wife out of, you know, pl uh, you know, uh, cause he fools him. He makes, he makes yeah, he him think him. that he's having an or something like that yeah yeah because howard saying is it extreme like one of the things he finds out is he's an extreme like he loves his wife more than anything but he's extremely possessive of her and he's an extremely jealous man so he basically uh convinces howard that his like right hand man who turns out to be a homosexual that you find out is uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah his right hand man is secretly having an affair with his wife so he goes and he confronts his right hand man ended up killing him because he's like dude i don't know what you're talking about and he's like you're a liar and kills him yeah. in his own home and then he goes to his wife and throws her off of a bridge because he's like you're disloyal so not only does he lose his son he loses his best friend he kills his wife and then in the end, you know, they have this giant shootout and he uh, attaches Howard Saint to the back of a car and he just sets the car. And basically it's a great scene where he's just getting drug through this parking lot and all these cars are exploding around him. And finally, which is obviously it's super fake. Like you could see like it's definitely a mannequin that's just set on fire. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's super satisfying. You're like, man, this, you know, if if somebody killed your entire family. And you yeah. managed to survive. Like, would just killing him be enough? You know, like what? Right. Like, what would you go? Like, what? Like, what would you do? What would you go to the ends of earth of the earth to, you know, to uh, get your revenge? And is is that enough? Right. Yeah, it's true, man. I the the, the satisfying thing about this one is that, is that, like you say, he doesn't just kill the person. He dismantles his entire family. He fools him into thinking all these other things into killing his own people that he trusted. So it's almost like a family for family kind of thing, you know? Uh, yeah, it's funny. I don't remember liking I don't remember liking this version too, too much of the Punisher because the Punisher has been done quite a few times, actually. Yeah. But uh, I like the way you lay it out, man, because, uh, um, you know, there are worse things. There are worse way, worse things to happen to a person than to just be killed, you know. But yeah. it's, so it's another thing of like John Travolta realizing before his character dies that it was how it was him. It was the, it was Frank Castle who did it, who fooled him into thinking that his wife was disloyal and his buddy, you know, his, yeah. his friend was disloyal. And uh, there's a fair amount of like shooting and stuff like that, which is what we know the Punisher for. But. He really does punish him. He really does like dismantle yeah. his whole wife, you know. It's like he could have just killed his wife, but that, you know, what's worse, having your wife killed or being fooled to kill your wife with your own hands? You be the right. One, you know, what would be way worse? Uh so yeah, that's I like that theme. It's like, okay, well the, the whole theme is of the punisher is to, like you said, to punish the people mm -hmm. that need to be to be so. And like, what's the worst punishment you can think of besides just death? Because death is easy. You know, yes. it just lights out. 
But uh, yep. if you can make someone feel beforehand, it's like, okay, boom, punished. Yeah. Yep. Let's talk about this, man, because uh, there's there we've we're, we're kind of talking about different ways to punish, different ways to get to stick it to the guy, to the bad guy before they actually find their ultimate demise. But this one is really just like it's like slamming somebody into the pavement a dozen times before you crush their head. But <laughs> on air, Cyrus the virus, yeah, uh, John Malkovich's character, because the, the end, the ending fight scene, they're on, a, you know, they're on a. Um, a fire uh, chase, like them. A they're on a fire truck. Yeah, Nick Cage and Cyrus, you know, uh, are fighting yeah, on Army the Ranger Cameron. Army Ranger Cameron. Army oh, from, from Second from Ranger Second Battalion. Ranger. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know what's really just, funny on that one, man. Uh, my fiance, she's like doing her uh, medical school rotations right now, and like she's that means she works with like a, doctors from different specialties, and she was like uh, talking to this with one doctor, uh, from. Uh, I forgot what specialty it was, but she's like, was talking about me. And she's like, Oh, you're married or you're, you're engaged. She's like, yeah. He's like, what's your fiance's name? Tell me a little bit about him. She's like, well, his name's Cameron. Uh, he used to be a army ranger and he like stopped her. He's like, are you fucking with me? She's like, <laughs> she's like, are you explaining the plot of con air right now? And she's like, what? And she's like, you know what con air is about? It's like an army ranger named Cameron Poe. And like he gets arrested and stuff. And I was just like, well, yeah, I've done all those things. So I like, <laughs> guess that movie is just based off me. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Oh, yeah. man. I love this one because uh, it's classic. Uh, you know, uh, it's is it Michael Bay and. Uh, uh, and uh, what's his name? Michael Bay and uh, oh, not John Frankenheimer, but uh, Jerry Bruckheimer, Jerry Bruckheimer, Michael Bay, classic. Um, you know, action, just over the top action, cheesy kind of one liners. Um, but bad guys that are really bad. Like he's on, it's Con Air. He is on this flight with just the worst of the worst. And so it's just great. It's great that uh, it, the, the deaths are satisfying because you know that all of these people are deserve just it, the yeah. worst. They're just the worst. And they prove it every moment, you know, uh, until the very end. And so, John Malkovich's death is amazing because he he attaches him to the ladder of the fire the the fire uh truck fire truck and he yeah. raises him up and they're in like was it like Vegas or Reno or they're something in like, like Vegas that? or Reno yeah yeah um and so and th so the first thing he gets smashed through this like overpass this walkway overpass right yeah. Which is and immediate then, death, you know, especially yeah, going that, that fast. Anybody. Like you're crushed, you glass you're crushed. and debris, yeah. and you get crushed. Yeah, but not only that, but then he, uh, he gets he falls off of it through electrical wires. <laughs> yeah, like and he's just getting electrocuted. Yeah, yeah, and then he gets onto a conveniently placed construction site conveyor belt that has a, a like a pounding like rock pulverizer at the end of yeah, it that like keeps hydraulic press down. Or hydraulic press. Yeah, and so he goes through that. And then he he's on the conveyor belt, and then finally he gets right in there, and it's the classic like rising up, and you see the camera kind of zooming down at his face, and he just gets his head crushed. It's like yeah, it's no. just death after death after death, like he's just rubbing it in, you know, uh, which I think is appropriate for the character. But I just love it. it's just so ridiculous, you know, the level of like like the, he would have been dead after the first one, but you just got to oh, get absolutely. all that stuff yeah. in there. You can just see Michael Bay. And Jerry Brockheimer would be like, oh man, wouldn't it be cool? Okay, he's like, through the thing. No, no, we gotta go to lecture. No, 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 we gotta smash it. Let's do all three. Let's just do everything, you know? Yeah. Wait, Michael Bay directed this movie? No, no, I uh let's see. No, Simon West, I'm sorry. I I, I always West. associate J Jerry Bruckheimer with Michael Bay. So uh, <laughs> Simon West was a guy who uh who uh, directed it. Uh and I th I think it was like produced by Wait, by isn't Dave Jerry Bruckheimer Chappelle is a producer? Too, yeah. Yeah, he's one of the bad you know, dudes, right? Yeah, Dave Chappelle is there. But it's funny because you have like Cameron Poe's character, which, you know, he's getting out of prison. Like, this is his ride home. Yeah. And not yeah. to mention, yeah, Nicolas he, Cage does the worst Southern accent in I hope, the world. I told I, him to put down the bunny. Yeah, told him to put down the bunny. <laughs> my bunny. And he's like, how's my baby doing? <laughs> it's oh so gosh. bad. It's such a bad accent, but I think that's what adds to the like why this movie's so good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just have crazy kids. Steve Buscemi plays a serial killer. You know, you have Dave Chappelle, who's just just a yep. bad guy. 
And then, yep. you know, John Malkovich, Monica Porter, Danny Trejo's in here. And yeah, he's got a Danny Trejo, ball. man. Yeah. Yeah, he's it's a, a killer he's a grease cast. ball. Yeah. Yeah, super grease ball. Just look, looking after a easy, easy lay. And, uh, yep. yeah, no, it's just, it's a bunch of characters that when people are like that, you know, I think we talked about John Wick in the last uh, episode of the kill shot. And it's just like, well, all those deaths are so satisfying because, you know, those people deserve it, you know? Yep. So, yep. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and Danny Tree, all those deaths are just like, oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. What's always weird, what's always fascinating that the weird moment in that movie is uh, you got freaking Steve Buscemi, right? And he's like this serial killer or something like that. Like he's, yeah, all he's like, like the Hannibal Lecter kind yeah, of Yeah, he's like Dan done up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the Marietta Mangler. And you see, you think they've set him up to be like this total like uh like monster and you end and then he is there's like the little kid when they stop and make the pit stop and he gets off and he's playing with the little kid and then you see him walk back with the doll you think oh my god he killed the kid but then later on when they take off you see the kids like still there so it's like he totally is not he totally ends up not being he's just a weirdo just a weirdo yeah (laughs) yeah you know he's not like a a merciless i mean he is you know yeah merciless killer but like i feel like inside he's adolescent like he's mentally ill probably so he's just i don't know yeah but uh, it's like how would you think uh he's just a weirdo like the documentary about uh Dahmer on that was on netflix that was like huge for a while uh-huh. remember did you ever watch i know it? that it was i never watched that now i, I missed okay. all that Dahmer stuff they had that and then they had a miniseries where it was like an, a regular like drama yeah they were really obsessed with serial killers for like a for like a hot minute there but like the yeah, Dahmer series that. like you realize He's just a weirdo. Like, he's just a weirdo. He's not like a savage. I mean, he is a savage, like, in what he did to those people. But, like, at the end of the day, he's just mentally ill weirdo. Like, yeah. So, yeah, that's why I don't trust weirdos, man. If you're a weirdo, stay away from me. If you're that, uh, that is, my wife mentioned this one time. She's like, you know, you realize, like, uh, the greatest generation comes home. Or, or, you know, there's a lot of, like, f- there's a lot of, like, single mothers growing up and, like, like gr- raising sons in the 40s and 50s. And then there's yeah. like this explosion of serial killers in the 60s and 70s, oh, yeah. like single yeah. motherhood, no fathers in the house, man. Your kids are going to grow up to be serial killers. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. Oh, no, no. it seems kind of suspicious. Need some direction. <laughs> need some direction there. Need some man. Need some testosterone in the house. That's right. Uh, another one here. Oh, this is a good one. So we d- we didn't mention this one, but if you Google satisfying deaths, it's on like every single list um but in the movie the mist there is a crazy lady uh, she's a little a bit of an extremist when it comes to her religion right and yeah. she not seems... a good not a good characterization of any kind of christian religion that i know of she's just yeah. a horrible person it's just a horrible person and like i feel like she piggy she like uses religion and convinces all these people you know to do what she wants to do uh, because, you know, she's able to do so because she's saying like, oh, no, a higher power like wants this. Um, yeah. So like not a, as you said, not a good representation of like the Christian community right there. I, I'm very confident that like if the mist would happen, Israel, you would not be like her, um, wow. you know, wouldn't start my own little cult when people start to lose their minds. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's funny because it's it's funny in the movie itself. It's a good, it's a well done film because at first it starts off like people trying to work together and they're kind of they're kind of believing in each other. I think the movie itself is more like a it's like commentary on how we break down and turn on each other in crisis situations. But she, yeah. you know, she starts gaining kind of followers like one person here, one person there, and uh, she starts manipulating people and kind of imposing her will on them. And pretty soon, the good guys, you know, the kind of rational people, are the ones that are being mobbed against you know and like more and more this kind of mob mentality takes over yeah and she's kind of at the leader uh and so until she just totally becomes unhinged so yeah. it's a good build up because you know i think in the movie even you know from the very beginning like oh, this lady like i can't believe anybody would like her yeah. or interact with her and then by the end you're like oh my god she's leading everybody like everyone's yeah her, like, like following her so that leads up to her death being like way more satisfying you're like finally somebody did it (laughs) let me bring your your spirits up a little bit because there's some really satisfying stuff uh from leon the professional uh this is old school this is like 90s this is a natalie portman's first 
like yeah. major role. Um, but kind of a weird movie, especially if you watch the extended version and like they kind nowadays. of develop the love story. Nowadays, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe we've come back, we've come full circle in our society to where it's like, no, that's a totally acceptable relationship. But you know, he's the hitman and he's kind of just kind of a loner, really not even that all that educated, but he's good at what he does. And Natalie Portman in him, uh, you know, he ends up taking care of her. And then there's the corrupt cop, Gary Oldman, who's just good at everything that he does. And there's that last scene where he finally saves Matilda. He gets her out of there. She crawls down and kind of gets away yeah, and runs shoot, away. Yeah. Yeah. And you think he's going to get away. He kind of disguises himself in the chaos as a SWAT guy with a mask on. And then he kind of takes a different route out. But Gary Oldman recognizes him. And there's that scene where he's he takes his mask off and he's walking towards the street like he's going to get away. And then Gary Oldman shows up behind him and like shoots him in the neck or something like that, you know. Uh, and so he falls down. And, you know, Gary Oldman, the reason this is so satisfying is Gary Oldman is the worst kind of like scummy, corrupt uh, yeah. cop. You think he's just yeah, like another he's... drug dealer, gangster dude. Yeah, because he's always he's, hopped up on something. He's literally yeah. just like what we started out on this show on is Alonzo from Training Day. He's like yeah. a piece of shit. Cop. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize that. Always on something, and he kills Natalie Portman's entire family. You yeah. know, uh, because her dad is corrupt, and he's been holding on to drugs, but then he takes some of the drugs for himself. Uh, and then Gary Oldman and his squad come in and they cover it all up cause they're cops. And so they, they call it just a, uh, you know, interrogation gone wrong or whatever, but even her little brother gets killed. He's like four years old or whatever. And she's like 12 in that movie. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, and he, and she even tries to, she doesn't know what she's doing. She wants to go and kill him. She go, gets into the police station, right? And then he comes in and he even has that one line when he's, he cat they capture her. And she can't go through with it because she's too afraid. Uh, and he's like, uh, he's he's like, do you want to live or something like that? She's like, you know, and he's and she's like, yeah. And he's like, and he's like, that's good. I take no pleasure in taking life who pe from people who don't value their own lives. It's like, wait, so you do? It's like it gets some sort of perverse pleasure from killing people who actually want to live. And he's just a he's just a freak and a weirdo. So he kills. Yeah, he is. He's a bit of a weirdo. Plus, you. You said it's uh you said it could be the relationship could be interpreted different ways. I remember we were on our way we had a long drive and you're like recommended this movie to me and I never heard of it. <laughs> and then when we got back to our home I watched it and I was like sent you a text and I'm like man fuck you that movie was weirder <laughs> than shit. You're like it's a you're like it's a beautiful relationship and I'm sitting over here like this guy's a pedophile. He like, <laughs> but he's, he's like not. in love. He, it's it. I don't know uh, if it's a it, French thing. It might be a French thing, but like, he like romanticizes he do this like little. Yeah, he doesn't do anything, but you don't know. He what's has going lines on about head. like she's she's like a teenage girl, so she's all on oh, dude, she's like thirteen. Like, she's like, 13. yeah. It isn't like yeah. you know when's your birthday? When do you turn eighteen? She's like in two weeks. <laughs> it's not like one of those. It's like she's thirteen, <laughs> yeah, and he's like she's oh, yeah. beautiful. And you're like, yeah, dude, it's yeah. If you watch that movie nowadays, you'd be like, they do kiss weird. on the mouth. They do have a. They do movie. kiss on the mouth. Yeah, that's super weird. It's super. Yeah. Weird. Could you imagine Natalie Portman's like guardian when they're like going over the script and she's like, she has to kiss who on the mouth, yeah. a full grown man? And they're like, no, yeah. no, 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 he's European. And she's, they're like, oh, it's okay. Oh, that's okay. It's fine. It's I mean, fine. she's he's Israeli. European. Maybe yeah. her parents were like super avant garde at the time. They're like. It's yeah. <laughs> Yeah, anyways, man. Yeah, no, that's a great death. You know, rolling over, seeing yeah. the frag grenade and just blowing yeah. him up. Well, the best part is it was like he put he rolls him over and he he grabs his hand, he grabs the cop's hand, and he says, This is from Matilda. And you don't see what it is. And then he opens his hand and it's the pin of a grenade in his hand. And then he opens up Jean Renault's vest and it's all these grenades. He's like, Oh damn it. And then boom, damn it, that's it. Boom, big explosion. Yeah. So uh yeah. So weird movie. Maybe I gotta go to therapy. Uh, yeah, but, maybe. uh very I'll satisfying know. death. Very satisfying death, indeed. For both of them. Two yes. birds with one stone. Yeah, two yes. weirdos with one stone. Uh, <laughs> real quick. He's poetic. He could never he could never have her because that would be wrong, so he has to die. Exactly. So that's the only proper exit for pedos is death. So <laughs>
but I know uh, I wanted to do one uh, honorable mention just because we're getting pretty uh, up there on time. But the boys has some iconic deaths because in the entire oh, series, like I honestly I love this and I love this series just because it is such a spinoff of like what Marvel and DC created. Everybody thinks like superheroes are, you know, morally straight and like, you know, yeah. but in reality, people are people, you know, what if people today just had super abilities, you yeah. know, and they didn't have a choice. Cause we find out that like the parents are the ones that made most of the soups and then Homelander creating in the lab, like people, they're not ingrained to be morally straight superheroes. So it's just like, what if someone had all these, this power, and they were untouchable, just like the elites of this country or the rich people. Like you hear about them doing, you know, absolutely crazy things because they don't think that they can get away with it because they have a bunch yep. of money. So like what would happen to somebody that could get away with anything because they could not be stopped and nobody would ever, ever be able to do anything about them. Well, imagine, that's the the Epstein, boys. imagine the Epstein Island that would exist if superheroes if they were, were superheroes. Really yeah. Oh, yeah. No, nobody would, be, they able would to do anything. be totally open about it and nobody could do anything about it. Like, yeah, I got an island. What are you gonna do? Yeah, I got an island, you know. Yeah, I have sex with children. Like, what are you gonna do? And probably nothing because I don't want to die. Um, yeah. yeah, you can't control those people. Uh, but yeah, there's some really uh, gratifying deaths. Like, I mean, the series opens up with just a crazy death of, you know, you have the main protagonist, his girlfriend. Uh, they're sitting on the street. They're sharing a beautiful moment, talking about the future. And yep. you know, you if you've never seen it, I don't want to ruin it for you but I'm going to because this is the PCFM podcast and we do spoilers here. <laughs> but like they're having a beautiful moment and it's like, you know, mush. Yep. Just mush. Out of nowhere. Moment. She's yeah. in a moment. Just don't even see it coming. It's mid conversation as I'm speaking to you right now, if I just blew up uh, and it's, it's shocking. And then it, you find out that one of the superheroes uh, ends up who has super speed, like the flash just runs right through her by accident because he's hopped up on drugs and that's how the show starts. So, uh, you know, the entire first season is kind of dedicated to figuring out how to kill these people and how to make them pay, how to like punish them. Um, and there's one superhero named translucent and his superpower is invisibility. And he, you know, what would you do if no one could ever see you and you were a male? Yeah. You'd and probably be a got peeping <laughs> and he's got uh, 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 invulnerable skin when he is yeah. invisible. Yeah. yeah. All superheroes have diamond like coated skin. Like they can't be shot. Like they do not, you know, he's, he's impenetrable. He's literally, uh, you know, he is immortal in a way. Um, so, you know, what would you do if you do that? You'd probably sneak in the girl's locker room and be a huge perv and creep. Uh, and that's exactly <laughs> who this guy was. So when they finally figure, figure out how to kill him, and it is a satisfying death because they pack his butthole with a bunch of C4 and blow him sky high from the inside out. Uh, so that death is super satisfying because first you get rid of a scumbag. And secondly, you realize that these guys are now touchable uh, yep. and they're going to get what's coming to them. So that's just honorable mention that, you know, became was went way longer than I thought it was going to go. But uh, yeah, the boys, <laughs> <laughs> the boys, uh, I'll, I'll do two honorable mentions. Uh, we didn't really touch on video games much this time, but Last of Us Part One, when Ellie kills, uh, I think his name is David, the cult leader, the cannibal. Mm. Um, yeah, it's anyway. very satisfying because the dude's such a creeper. I know they recreated He's such a creep. Yeah, they recreated it in the show, and arguably it's a little more brutal because they let the shot go for longer. But like he tries to seduce her, and then he try, you know, and then he tries to rape her. He tries to. Uh, eater you know and then in yeah. the burning lodge she finally gets him and she hacks his head away to nothingness like t time and time again with the hatchet or the machete or whatever and yeah. it's just like this it, they do a good job of it in the show where it's like this release of like she's been so tense and she's he's such a creeper that she starts like yelling out and, and crying even a little bit because she's just so traumatized by what happened and what she's like forced to do you know to survive uh and so that's a that's a great one and then of course everybody's favorite bad guy micah bell from red dead redemption 2 like yeah. you just you want him to die from the first moment you see him and you just know he's bad you see him influencing uh the gang of uh, the leader of the gang i forget his name right now but uh you know and then at the very end after in the prologue i guess um john marston you finally take him out 
in the quick time event. And you could just, I didn't know, like I shot him like 10 times in the face <laughs> when I did it. And then there's the animation where he's kind of like, has this kind of like bewildered look on his face and he kind of walks a little bit and then falls. I'm like that. I like, I could see the blood like in his face. Cause I shot him like all it. And like, I'm like, that doesn't really work for me, but I, I, I appreciate the end, the death animation. Cause like, maybe if I would have shot him in the gut, it would have been made a little more sense. I'm like, yeah. that was like 17 shots. Right. Right. In your face. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like you uh, went overkill there, but for good reason. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, so that, that is it for the main body folks. we got a fan question in the game. If you want to hang out with us for a little bit longer, this one is from Johnny G Cameron. You want to take this one? Sure, Johnny, what's going on, man? Always a pleasure to hear from you. And he wants to know, okay, so watching military pop culture, you know, as everyone does, I notice the operators always have on mechanics gloves. How accurate is this and why would they choose to go with them? Personally, I don't ever use, I don't even use them. And because Johnny is a mechanic back in Canada, I find that gloves can limit my dexterity too much. So I'll just use a plain cotton glove or like a nitrile glove when working with fluids. So... Mm. Um, this is like back in your day, man. The mechanics yeah. gloves were like yeah. all the rage. They were, they were all the rage. I think it was something that where it was just good, relatively good manual dexterity, like low profile, like thin, um, uh, thin enough material that you had got pretty good manual dexterity. I had uh, Oakley gloves with the knuckle, the knuckle yeah, the protection knuckle right there, the kind of little knuckle mold there, which I loved because man, you're going around moving. I have, I hit my hands and you pinch your hands and you get it caught in little crevices and nooks and crannies when you're in your AMRAP or your Humvee, you're loading ammo cans, you're loading equipment. I use those things all the time, but yeah, that was the thing. You know, I think it depends on what you're doing. It sounds like, uh, Johnny, he's a, he works with fluids and stuff like that. I don't know that I would use it in that case, but yeah. I didn't, I didn't ever, um, I'm trying to think if I wore them like actually on like missions and stuff. I think I did. I got pretty good. Or I got pretty used to them, you know, and I trained with them a lot and stuff. But um, yeah, that was just kind of my personal preference. Yeah, no, they mechanics kind of phased out in my era because we started like getting really, really good gloves. Um, the whole glove thing is like we did an episode on gloves on shift fire and like for military use, like it's a give or take because, yeah. you know, they're they're considered part of your PPE, which is, you know personal protective equipment they're supposed to protect you you know keep you from getting burns and boo-boos and getting your you know knuckles crushed uh but they're hard to operate like very it's hard to get fine dexterity out of them when you need to like do like say you're working on a casualty or you need to do something you know that requires more dexterity the thicker the glove is the more durable it is the more it protects you the harder it is to do those things mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh so like you have to you have to sacrifice i know when i first joined uh i was using mechanics gloves because they made uh they made a really light pair that had was a good happy medium between the ones they issued me. Um, mm -hmm. But but then again, they also ripped super quickly. Um, but I think mechanics are, uh, are used so often just because they're extremely cheap. You know, mm. you can buy like three pairs of them for under $40. I think they're like $18 each now, and that's with inflation. So like you can have multiple pairs. If they break, you just replace them super cheap. They're everywhere. You know, you can get them at AutoZone. You can get them at Walmart. You don't need to go to the tactical gear store to get mechanics there. The accessibility is there. Um, also, they make neutral colors, so they go with your camos. So, yeah, I think they're just, it's easy access. They're cheap. They do, the, they work well for what they are. And, uh, yeah, I think that's why a lot of people in the military use them. It's funny because mm. I have a, I just bought a pair of all black mechanics gloves because I'm, like, recreating an old school kit. And, uh, nice. yeah, they're like, I was like, what gloves am I going to get? I was like, oh. Mechanics black, of course. <laughs> but we hope that answered know, your question, John. All right. The time is upon us, Cameron. The time the is upon us. The prophecy will be fulfilled. Absolutely. And it, that prophecy is in the form of a game. And I am the game master here. And this game is called, Hey, Who's Killing Who Here? I'm going to give <laughs> you the name of a character or a real person. And you tell me who killed them. Who killed them? Okay. And then here's a note. Like here's a note for me. It says only give the show video game or movie if Izzy is struggling. Okay. So oh, okay. So I have permission. Hint, Chris hint. has granted me permission to give you hints. Oh, okay. these, these might actually be really tough. <laughs> okay. I don't know. We have we have a warm up here, so we'll see. So I mean, this might be. So it's a mix between pop culture figures and real historical figures. Mm. And you just tell me 
who killed them. And if you're struggling hardcore, I'll give you, uh, you know, the movie of what it is, if you can't recognize who it is. So with the warm up, are you ready? I'm ready, man. Okay, so warm up. Who killed Am Abraham Lincoln? Ah, uh, that would be John Wilkes Booth. He was a male model. <laughs> played by he, John, he was, played by James Marsden in the Zoolander uh, movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude, what a random thought. That's like <laughs> 15 second little bit in that movie, and you got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. A male model. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. No, you're absolutely correct. So you understand how the game works. So we're just going to go ahead, jump in feet, for, uh, feet first. First person, Rufio. Ah, uh, Rufio. Rufio from Hook. All right. Who you killed Rufio? You know what I wish? My happy thought would be, I wish I had a dad just like you. Right before he dies. Rufio, he gets killed. Uh, he's looky, looky. I got hooky. He gets stabbed by Captain Hook. <laughs> and yeah. you're absolutely right with the, you're absolutely right with the uh, even quote there. Yeah. So awesome. You got that one. Good job. Moving right along. Mike Ermintrout. Oh, Mike, Mike, Mike from, uh, from Breaking Bad. Oh yeah. I, I actually recently just finished, uh, Better Call Saul and he's really great in that one too. You get to know a little bit more about him, but Mike Aaron Trout, former police cop, police cop, <laughs> uh, gets killed by Walter White in, in Breaking Bad. He gets shot. Walter White, man, like think, I don't know what he thought he was going to do pulling out the gun, but Mike tries to, to burn rubber and get out of there and he gets shot by Walter and it's sad, man, because he's sitting on the rock. He gets away, and Walter comes up. He's like, I, I, I didn't mean. He's like, just shut up and let me die. <laughs> and then he just man, plops dude. over dead. That's sort of the yeah, end I'm of the surprised series, he kills Mike because, like, yeah. Walter White's, like, afraid of Mike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Walter White, it's, that's what's one of the geniuses of the show is how he is able to overcome these foes who are stronger, smarter, more well-connected than he is. So, yeah. Yeah, no. Great one. All right. You got that. And it's crazy. I don't know how you remember these characters' names because, like, his name's Mike. You know how many people are named Mike in TV? Anyway, right. that's just my thought. Next, Professor X. I mean, Who killed Professor X. I mean, I guess he doesn't actually die because then he gets, like, maybe like an amazing body that's exact, looks exactly like his and he gets his consciousness transferred into it or something. <laughs> but anyway, in X Men 3, X Men uh the last stand or something like that or um yeah x-men last stand he gets killed by gene gray as the dark phoenix like her powers are becoming too powerful for her and she's losing control and he gets like turned into micro bits by her <laughs> um yeah and so and then but then he comes back and he's magically back later so Okay. What happens? Does he die again ever? Does he ever die again? Um, oh, is that not the, uh, it's not, not the answer. Chris has something oh. different here. Oh, okay. Um, wait a second. Wait a second. Professor X. I mean, he gets shot by, uh, an executioner song in the comic books. He gets shot by somebody. Uh, so let's see, does he die else? Any other places? What happens in like the, what was the last one that, that came out? Dark Phoenix? Was that? No. no. That was with the young ones. That was, oh, Logan. Logan. Yes. I mean, he gets killed by Weapon X because he thinks it's Logan. It looks like Logan and he gets the snicked right through the chest. He gets the blades in the chest. He gets killed by Weapon X. Perfect. Yeah. X-24 okay. Wolverine's clone. Uh, there you go. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, honestly, you told like, yeah, he, he dies multiple times. Like the Dark Phoenix. Yeah. He gets eradicated into like nothing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So we'll give that one to you. <laughs> nice. Moving on. Lee Harvey Oswald. Oh, man. What? Lee Harvey Oswald? <laughs> yeah. Who kills Lee Harvey Oswald? Uh, I mean, didn't he get executed or something like that? I, I don't, it's like one of those conspiratorial kind of things, but, uh, yeah. Doesn't he get executed? Cause you know, he's he shot, he shoots JFK. I don't know what happened to him after that. Did he get nope. shot before he went to trial? But I don't know. Executed yes, by the U S government. Oh, he did. 
Oh, he did? No. Oh, so I'll oh, just okay. give it to you. Yeah, so before, okay. so he was killed by Jack Ruby, Jack Leon Ruby, who's an American nightclub owner who murdered Lee Harvey Oswald on November 24th, 1963, two days after Oswald was accused of the assassination of Kennedy. Oh, well, that's news to me. That's good history. That's news to I me too, man. That's yeah. good history. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I always yeah. thought it was, uh, Kennedy's death was a CIA, uh, cover up. Um, yeah, but, uh, that's the, that's how the conspiracy goes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So don't worry. We learned, we both learned on that one, but moving <laughs> right along, we have Donal, Don, Donald Gennaro. Wait, what? Donald Ger- Gennaro. Donald Gennaro? How do you see? Did he forget something? You know, let me see. Gennaro. You don't Google this. I will Google this. Gennaro sounds like that's. Yeah, it's that's- okay. He forgot the D. It's Donald Gennaro. Donald Gennaro. Donald Gennaro. Dude, that's, I don't know. That's the only Gennaro I know about is I just recently watched Die Hard, and that's Bruce Willis's wife's maiden name that she uses. Uh, but that's the I think it's Donald. Gennaro. I think it's pronounced Donald. Gennaro, but it's from Jurassic. He's from Jurassic Park. Donald Gennaro. Mm, gosh. I mean, the, okay, just because the name doesn't sound familiar, I'm guessing it's the lawyer. The lawyer who's, who gets eaten by the T-Rex when he's on the toilet. Uh, Donald Gennaro. I'm guessing it's going to be the lawyer, the blood sucking lawyer who gets killed. He's chomped by the T-Rex. Well, way to go with your gut. Cause you were absolutely correct. He is killed <laughs> by the T-Rex. And yeah, what a random character to throw in here. Wow. Chris yeah. is really gunning for you, huh? Yeah. Can yeah. You imagine man, if that... I wasn't allowed to give you names of movies. No, nah, I would have never gotten it. I, I didn't even know who that, I didn't even know like I had a name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah me neither it was just a lawyer guy that got killed on the pot most embarrassing yep. death of movie history um <laughs> but cool man you're killing it you're only good you're only missed one but you're on a good track so we'll move on and let's see if i can pronounce this correctly it's one word one Arieth. Arith. oh Arith gainsborough from final fantasy 7 yeah she gets stabbed through the through the back by by sephiroth it's very sad this is a very traumatizing death i played that when i was in what is in what, junior high, yeah, I think junior high, beginning of high school, maybe. Uh, I forget when that came Sephiroth. out. Six minutes, yeah, Sephiroth, Sephiroth. Sephiroth. Uh, but yeah, very sad. She's praying, and she gets sacrificed. I think her spirit comes back later or something like that. I don't know. We'll see what okay. happens when the second remake comes out, see if she gets killed again. But okay, well, you are absolutely correct, man, in all your nerdliness. Yes, she is killed by Sephiroth. All right, well. Last one here. Let's see if you can finish it off strong. Are you ready, my friend? Ready. Okay. Jesse James. Oh, uh, um. By the coward Robert Ford. There's that whole movie with uh, Brad Pitt, like the death of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. Uh, he was a member of his gang. He's shot by, mm-hmm. uh, by Robert Ford. Shot him in the, uh, did you shoot him in the back? But anyway, Robert Ford is the guy's name, I think. Wow. And you are absolutely correct, man. You know your outlaw history. Yes, April 3rd, 1882. Jesse James was shot and killed by Robert Ford, a new recruit to the gang who hoped to collect reward on James's head. Yeah. And promised yeah. amnesty. So he was like a, he was, he was like an inside man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. He, uh, he used a turncoat. Dude, crazy. I didn't even know that. But way to go, man. You only missed one. But honestly, the one you missed was like, what the hell? Nobody knew that one. <laughs> I, I, think it's, I don't know how good of a sign it is that I got all of the fictional deaths, but the one like the historical, the actual death, historical. Yeah. One? Yeah. Like, oh, I didn't get that. One. It's cool, know. man. Actual he was history. a nobody anyways. He just killed. Yeah, the he, he, was the he was the coward. He was a coward. Yeah, he was a coward. But cool. <laughs> Well, folks, we hope you enjoyed that game. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this hour with us in your cars, and we look forward to next week with you. Izzy, you got anything before we go? Nothing, man. That's it for me. And until next time, folks, cue music. (laughs) 